välkomna till den 25 upplagan av Stockholms internationella filmfestival. Jag heter Gitt Tjejny, så är festivalchef och är väldigt stolt över att kunna presentera vårt hittills största program på 200 filmer. Vi skulle vilja visa en film om Ai Weiwei som berättar lite mer om vem han är. The festival invited me to show their support for freedom of speech. I think that's a very important act, uh, not only for uh, movie industry or a film, uh, uh, people who are making films, but also to, to announce that kind of very essential values about uh, expression. Här med din vägg jag Ai Weiwei's i skulpturer. Okay, we declare, declare the 25th uh, Stockholm, Stockholm Film Festival, Festival open. open. Stockholm Achievement Award and to meet this year's recipient, Uma Thurman. I'm certain I've been very, very fortunate to um, have been, you know, a director's actor from a very early time. You know, when I was from the beginning, you know, starting at a very young age, it was the time where the director was, it still is, but it was very much a director-centered mm. universe and cinema was king. Um, and the director was the king of the kings. Um, and that was something that uh, shaped me yeah. very much, that it was simply who the director was, not so much what the part was. Um, it was not a sort of, it was never a me-centered uh, choice. It would be to try to be part of working with incredible, great, artists and director writers and auteurs and and that kind of guided me from the beginning yeah did you feel protected by the directors well sometimes <laughs> um mostly yes i feel very i was very spoiled you know uh, terry gilliam stephen frears john borman mm -hmm. um all early directors in my life that i was blessed to work with um it was i was very indulged you know yeah. to get to work with with people like that Mm. at a time that they were truly all of them in, in great stride with their work. But did you have a, any actor mentors or did you kind of find your own path in, in terms of technique and...? Um, well, all the actors I worked with were, were mentors to me. Um, they were all exceptional. I mean, some of it was funny. I remember in a scene from Dangerous Liaison, I was uh, sort of on the floor in front of Glenn Close, just barely 18 years old. And, in a, a scene where I was plaintively, you know, calling out to her. And, I, and in between takes, I said, do you have any suggestions? What, what can I do? What can I do? <laughs> and she looked at me very severely, and I love her to this day, and she said, try less hard. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, that was a very good note, yeah. actually. Extraordinarily, the hardest thing to do is to try less hard, right, um, <laughs> in life. But yeah. um, you have to try. You try as much as you try. It's, uh, we all have a kind of a DNA imprint of how hard we try in life. I think it's as hard to escape as your own face. Yeah. But uh, are you a method actor or do you base it more on technique? I studied method acting when I was a young person. Um, 
and it's interesting. I, my, I had a coach who I worked with for many years in the beginning, and I sort of found my own sort of passage, and it changed over time, and it does. Um, it was not, I would certainly not blame any acting teacher <laughs> for my career. Um, <laughs> so, but I, you know, for me, it was, I very much adapted how to approach to each character to the screenplay, to the director. Um, it was very important to me to truly belong to a director in, in, in as far as how to pitch a performance. Yeah. Um, no two are the same, and you know, and, and truly to belong to the writing, almost in each time in original manner. So yes, there are sort of like there are patterns to the tradition of how to go about something, yeah. but because I wanted to do comedy and I wanted to do try every genre of filmmaking and um, you know noir and uh, drama and comedy and 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 so on, I, I I always felt like I had to sort of throw away the rules of whatever worked for me last time and put everything I had available to trying something new. Oh. So your dream role is like the opposite of what you just did. That was sort of if, how I did spend a lot of my career was, you know, this, there was a silly term uh, when I was a young actress called being pigeonholed. I don't know mm. if you, uh, it's, it's nothing dirty. Um, it's like typecast. But being typecast, no. yeah. yes. And um, so, you know, especially as a sort of young woman, trying to keep from being typecast and prevent, you know, to not to cash in any particular type of character that people wanted you to play. Mm. Instead, to try so hard to do everything. And, you know, certainly during my sort of arc as a performer, it was nothing but constant, it's always like, like life, you know, it's constant resistance, you know. Oh, she can't do comedy. She's not funny. She can't do comedy. Oh, she, you, you, you can't do action. They'll be ridiculous. <laughs> By the way, I agreed with that thoroughly. <laughs> um, uh, and never more than the days and hours I spent trying. But, um, uh, uh, so, you know, so it basically, yes, it was always kind of um, being willing to throw all babies out with all bath water. Welcome to day four of the 25th edition of the Stockholm International Film Festival. We're at Movie Theatre Scandia to see director Mike Lee receive his Lifetime Achievement Award. In 1966, I took a tape recorder into the rehearsals. Okay. And after about 20 minutes, I threw it out of the window. You didn't open the window? I got into trouble because it wasn't my tape recorder, actually. Okay. So, yeah. um, I just made that up. I think it's really good. I'll use it next time. Very good. Um, I, <laughs> I, um, I, it's a nuisance. And this is the serious reason why it's not useful. Because, and anybody that's any sort of artist will understand this, the difference is between the preparatory work, the, the work that you do that has to happen first, the sketches you make, the, the notes you make, whatever it is, the um, experiments. It's the difference between that and the finished thing. Now, if I have an improvisation going on with the actors, that is not the artifact. That is merely something that is happening for us to experience on the road to later creating an artifact. If I start to say, I'm going to record it or I'm going to film it, I, it, it starts to become an artifact. I start to worry about the artifact in its own right. What the job, my job is, is to understand it, to empathize with it, to have it in my memory, my recall. And instead of being distracted by the worry of, will we remember this, will we recapture it, to, to concentrate on what the essence of the thing is, what's motivating it to happen, what's happening that could, I'm watching something happening, I think, well, what's the alternative? Would it be better if it was something else? And so on and so forth. So that it's all, but this is all part of a journey that we're moving 
forward to, so that finally, when we get onto the location and we actually start to define the thing itself, we can distill it down to something that then is, needs to be, uh, that will be recorded, and it'll be recorded by a film camera. You can only make my sort of films with a very intelligent and sensitive crew. Yeah. And the crew is on the side of the film. The crew are with us. Yeah. We're with, everybody's together and we're making the same film. Um, uh, uh, the, the, I mean, certainly the mood of the film will in some way get into people's bloodstream. And when we made Naked, for example, yeah. which is quite a tough film, oh, yeah. and we filmed it, we finally shot the, the later part of it in the winter time. So it was quite, there was an atmosphere there in some of the dark parts of the, uh, of the shoot, um, of the film, uh, which the atmosphere was there, but people are, you know, practical and sophisticated and, you know, uh, have a sense, still have a sense of humour. And so people dealt with that. But I don't think in the end, it doesn't make any difference. I suppose I'm saying the same thing. It doesn't really make any difference what the film is. The crew is with it. The crew is along with what's happening and entering into the spirit of it in an appropriate way, whatever that is. Welcome to the 25th edition of the Stockholm International Film Festival. We're here at Movie Theatre Scandia to see renowned Swedish director Roy Anderson receive his Lifetime Achievement Award. gör använder för den vida bilden för jag tycker den berättar mer om människan än hennes ansikte. Ingmar Bergman han trodde tvärtom. Han trodde att det var ögat som avslöjade människan. Eh, egenskaper och så vidare. Men då polemiserade jag med honom en gång och säger att eh, om man tittar på Bonny Wells, den andalusiska hunden, så finns det en scen där en kvinna skär sönder ett öga. Eh, skär med en rak, kniv rakt igenom ett öga. Men då visar det sig att det är ett koöga. Det är inte ett människöga. Och då ska man säga det här med att människan, eller det, det, själen avslöjas, avspeglas sin människas öga. Det går ju lika bra att byta ut emot ett koöga tydligen då. Vet du. Så, så, jag, så att jag, jag tyckte jag därigenom raserade den myten att man så att säga ser en människas själ i hennes ögon. Bra. Men var, var, var kommer först ändå? Alltså är det liksom det visuella uttrycket då, alltså, och det estetiska, hur du utformar det enligt, enligt en tavla? Eller liksom är det tematiska liksom, idén till, en, till ett själva scenariot så att säga? Varierar det? Vilket som kommer först? Liksom? Jag tror det är bilden som kommer först. Jag tror att liksom, mänskligheten har nog lärt sig kommunicera i, i begynnelsen med bilden först och främst. Så har ordet kommit långt, långt senare. Bilder och tecken. Sen kommer de formulerade orden. Ja, så måste det vara. Mm. Ofta brukar man nämna sången från andra våningen, alltså din stora comeback, som exempel på ett nytt sätt att göra film. Men, men redan i den prisbelönade kortfilmen Härlig i jorden från 91 och, och egentligen tidigare i reklamfilmen också så hade du nått fram till det uttrycket som du använder idag, även om du har förädlats ytterligare såklart. Eh, alltså dessa dystra tablor med stiliserade aktörer som personifiera människans litenhet. N när skulle du säga liksom, för dig själva verket, alltså den, den Roy Andersson som vi ser idag? Var det, var det på 80-talet eller 90-talet? Du menar stilmässigt? Och, stilmässigt och, ja, ja, just det. Alltså, ja, det är... Härlig jorden 91 kom den, ja. men det var ju tidigare så. Ja, I mitten på 80-talet. Jag höll på med en reklam också, för jag var ju lite ute i kylan ett tag efter det här fiaskot Giliab. Eh... Och jag höll på med reklamfilm i realistisk eller naturalistisk stil. Och blev så trött på det här till slut att jag funderade på att bli ingenjör istället. Eller något. Sysslar med något annat. Men över en natt så tyckte, fann jag lösningen i att våga gå över från att lämna naturalismen eller realismen. Och gå in i någonting som jag då vill kalla för abstraktionen. Den förtätade, renodlade stilen. Och där hade man, det finns ju inspirationskällor i filmhistorien som har tagit sådana steg. Och det är Fellini inte minst. Och Fellinis film, Il Nave, eller vad den heter. Il Nave Vai, alltså. När skeppet går. 
Den är, tycker jag, en, den är en stor inspirationskälla för mig. Där har använde Fellini till exempel vid ett tillfälle plast när han skulle beskriva ett hav. Det är en, alltså medvetet så ser man att det är plast men man får ändå känslan det att det ska vara ett hav. Och i den här filmen faktiskt är en stöld från när ni ska se om en stund där, med en liten plastsjö. <laughs> Får vi se om ni Spännande. upptäcker. <laughs> mm. Men under den här bottavaren från, från långfilmen så etablerar du dig också som, vågar jag säga, en av de mest originella reklamfilmsregissörerna i världen. Alltså hur mycket av det arbetet, alltså hur mycket av den lucken från reklamfilmen har du liksom, liksom är det, har du cementerat det där? Liksom, eller hur stor del av det som du har nått fram till i spelfilmen kommer från reklamfilmen? Mm. Det där med att göra filmer i en bild. Det har faktiskt utvecklats mycket med hjälp av reklamfilmen. För att jag fick under en period göra reklamfilm för försäkringsbolaget Trygg Hansa. Då tog jag gjorde det i tolv år. Trygg Hansas reklamfilmer det handlar ju om när det händer små olyckor. Eller folk tappar eller ramlar eller slår sönder och så vidare. Och om man tänker efter så är det egentligen detta resultat av gravitationen. Det är ju gravitationen som spelar oss eh, spratt, tyngdlagen. Och om man då ska göra de här situationerna, och då måste de göras på samma sätt som, så att man ser att det är tyngdlagen som, som, som skapar detta. Om man börjar klippa upp, då har man ju osidos av tyngdlagens eh, verkan. Då blir det så att säga klippbordet eller, som får ersätta tyngdlagen. Förstår ni vad jag menar mm. ungefär? Mm. Ja, gravitationen att ju den rättvisa i den vida bilden det har varit en liten ledstjärna plus det är också som jag sa att konsthistoriens intressantaste verk de är vida Welcome to the 25th edition of the Stockholm International Film Festival. We're at Södra Teatern in Stockholm to see the award ceremony. One of the world's heaviest awards, the bronze horse weighing 7.3 kilos, will be given the director of the best film in competition this year. Awards will also be given actors and actresses, screenwriters and cinematographers and other key players contributing to the making of a film. Welcome to join us for this special event. Festival director Git Chanius, what are your expectations for tonight? Well, I hope for a brilliant night uh, with a lot of uh, winners uh, here at the uh, Söda Teatern at Stockholm. It's been a great festival. Uh, we have a record-breaking audience this year and uh, we have over 201 films from 60 different countries. And I really hope for uh, diversity when it comes to the prize winners. Uh, But as always, uh, the best winner will win. My name is Tojo Akaller, and you are all warmly welcome to the 25th International Stockholm Film Festival. So, we'll jump right into best first film. The winner is Julie Jung, A Girl at My Door. To Sentak. <laughs> Now time to find out who our next rising star is. Julia Ragnarsson. Thank you, Stockholm Film Festival, for establishing this prize that might help people, as me, perhaps, uh, you know, get an extra push in the right direction in their careers. Thanks. <laughs> Our next award is the Telia Film Award. And the Telia Film Award was established to foster quality cinema lacking Swedish distribution. The aim is to help and encourage new filmmakers to get distribution. Uh, the films in this category have been screened on Telia On Demand, which is a way for anybody and everybody to view it as long as you're in Sweden. A big thanks to Telia for uh, being the main sponsor of Stockholm Film Festival, for without you guys, we'd all have to do this outside on the street and it would be super cold. Give a warm round of applause for our presenters of the Telia Film Award from Telia, Johanna Bren Brelindén, who is global head of Telia's business and director, Mons Månsson. 
On behalf of the rest of the jury, I want to thank you for giving us the chance to watch these uh, lovely films, all unfortunately yet without theatrical distribution in Sweden. And the winner of the Telia Film Award is... Ten Thousand Kilometer by Carlos Matias Masse. Dear distributors, here we are. Hi. Well, um, well, it, it's been a um, not an not an easy night because I got here at four and I'll be back to Barcelona at six in the morning. But I can't imagine a best way to visit a city than winning a, an award. I would like to thank uh, the festival. I would like to thank the volunteers and. Thank you so much. Bye. For the tenth time, we're proud to once again uh, hand out the Stockholm Visionary Award and give a warm round of applause to this year's recipient, our very own Swedish Roy Andersson. Jag tackar för den här. Och den hade inte varit möjlig att få utan cykelkjuven. Tack så mycket. Best cinematographer is the link between the viewer, the story and the camera. And the winner is Crystal Forner. These are the rules and girlhood. I'm not her. I am, I'm not Christelle Fournier, I'm, I'm the director of Girlhood. You're the director of the, of the film? Yeah, I'm the director oh, cool. of the film. Yeah, I'm, I'm Ogi. Yeah. Nice to meet you. <laughs> we have the same DOP. It's the first time, I think, in the history of the universe that two directors are taking one award for the same DOP. And it took uh, two films to win one, so it's cool. Yeah, but you will take the horse to Paris if it's so heavy. I think it's too heavy. So yeah. <laughs> okay, thank, thank you. Thank you for that. And it's now time to salute the writer. And the winner is Nima Jivadi Melbourne. You know, uh, this is a special award for me because uh, this is my first award for my first feature film. And you know, that's why, that's why I'm sure uh, I never forget this award, this jury, this Festival and this beautiful cold city. I'll uh, thank you, Sekon. Tak. Now over to our next category, and it is the Stockholm Lifetime Achievement Award. This year's Lifetime Achievement Award is presented to a filmmaker who is comfortable humanizing master artists, abortionists, and people who others would shy away from. Give a warm round of applause to the British director and writer, Mike Lee. Thank you to Stockholm Film Festival. This is, it goes without saying, that this is more than a great honor. It's an especial privilege to receive this here in Sweden, which of course is one of the great filmmaking countries in the world, and has been forever, for a very long time. And of course, it's a great home of independent, truly original, inspirational filmmakers. Here to present the winner of the category Best Actress is Gustav Skarsgård and Erika Wasserman. And the winner is... Jasna Salika and These Are The Rules. Well, thank you. I, I'm obviously not Jasna Zalitsa. I'm director of this movie. Uh, I had some concept of what I want to say, but this theater and all of you look so cool, so I just forgot it. And I think my 30 seconds are almost gone, so thank you. It's now time for the category Best Actor. Emir Hadzi Hafiz Begovic. Yeah, well, th thank you. I, I never had so much metal horses in my life. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much. Thank you, Kuala. 
Stockholm Film Festival proudly presents this year's award winner, actress Uma Thurman, who has received the award Stockholm Achievement Award with the motivation as the femme fatale of the new independent cinema of the 1990s. Uma Thurman has displayed an ability to portray and project the perfect and fantastical while giving gl glimpses of the humanity that lies within. Every performance is exciting, enthralling, and ferocious, and a gift to audiences worldwide. What a warm welcome. Uh, are so important for the film industry, you know, the really to create energy and attention to more serious films, and hopefully less serious ones sometimes. Now it is time to present our last presenter for the evening. He is also a member of the Stockholm Film Festival jury. Please give a huge round of applause to Mr. Daniel Espinoff. Hello. The winner of this year's Bronze Horse is the great movie Girlhood. Thank you so much. Thank you to the, to, the, to the film festival. Thank you to the jury. It's the, it's the first award that, that the film gets, actually. Maybe the last, I hope, because it's beautiful. You know, I could, I could talk about Bergman because he meant so much to me, but I'm going to talk about ABBA. <laughs> because it means also so much to me. This is actually true. I'm not being ironic. When I write a film, I pick an ABBA song. And for this film, it was The Winner Takes It All. <laughs> but why do I pick an ABBA song? Because each time I feel this courage that I don't find a way, I listen to an ABBA song because they have this great stylistic program that is making people dance on sad stories. And that is what I want for my films. And I guess that is what hope is all about. It's not about positive lyrics or positive stories. It's about believing in the melody and believing in cinema. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope that this evening has been truly uplifting for you. I hope more than anything else that hope is something that we will continue to have in our lives and more than anything else be able to give to other people. Um, I hope you had a good night and I just want to say thank you so very much for having me here. My name is Kojo Akaller and I'll be showing baby pictures in the bar later, okay? Thanks, bye-bye. <laughs>